A very good afternoon to you all. Thank you for watching Uganda Broadcasting Corporation Television, UBC TV. With me, Wadulo Mark Arnold. This is your lunchtime news this day. And uh, we actually celebrating a new month of July. So please be enlightened and uh, as we inspire you. So let's start with the news. In our first story, the presidential CEO forum proposed key interventions government should undertake to spot trade in the new markets. The CEO forum hosted by President Yurika Gutam Seveni at his Ntungamo country home proposed leveraging Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, UBC, to access infrastructure in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. The forum noted that DRC is heavily underserved by communications technology with just 45% mobile penetration, 10% internet penetration, and limited use of radio and television. These are the details. His DRC is heavily underserved by communication technology. For instance, mobile, the penetration is hardly 45%, internet, under 10%, limited use of radio and TV. South Sudan, nearly 80% of the people reside in rural areas with limited access to internet. The proposal, Your Excellency, is to support UBC to air and provide services even in the neighboring Eastern Congo. Then government through telecoms limited could link to semi-mobile to deliver mobile phones and internet connectivity. To this, Your Excellency, the issue of the ownership of Uganda Telecom becomes a critical issue. Government should as well, through its capitalization efforts to banks, also allow them to operate branches in DRC. Empowering UBC to broadcast to, the, to, 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 to beyond the borders, that's a very good idea. UTL being empowered and, and, and growing across the border and, and investing, I totally agree. The banks, the banks we have, the government banks which we have now are UDB and, uh, and the other one, Post Bank. We, we can empower them and they go and do business in, in, in like Commercial Bank of Kenya is doing in, in Juba. We can empower them. That's a very good idea. Mm. Commercial attaches, Commercial attaches speaking languages of Africa, Portuguese and so on, French, Francais, Francais, I totally agree. And finally, Sauro becoming a poor, Casita. If Casita you can sell my products within Uganda and outside, I would support you, of course. A total of 44 senior officers have graduated, have graduated from senior command and staff college Chimaka in Jinja City. In his remarks, as he presided over the function, the Minister of State for Defense, Honorable Jacob Maxon of both, congratulated the graduates and noted that only the only way to maintain a serving military is through continuous training. Now he said that the course postulates a new career and calls for new service, adding that the region faces multiple security challenges that require global combined responses. This achievement marks a new chapter in your careers which will call for solid commitment to duty and service to your respective countries and the region at, at, at large. You are all too aware that our region is faced with multiple security challenges, some of transnational nature, economic hardships, and of course global dynamics which are negatively impacting our societies as leaders I urge you to broaden your focus more beyond traditional military threats so that our respective militaries can up to 
respond to the issues in a strategic manner. In a very, very unsettled world, which my soul will focus. Today we see the kings of the world gathering their armies for battle. He wanted to call the valley of death. We should remain alert for whatever is happening somewhere else. We don't expect us here. Uh, when you have a past staff college course, you can be, you can work anywhere. It is a course that wraps up the entire military career from when you were a cadet up to where you are. Basically, this is where we are taught issues of policy and strategy, how to plan both military, militarily and other areas, economically, socially, politically, diplomatically. All of those issues are within strategy. And uh, I'm happy that I got this chance to do this course and uh, to improve or to add on my career. It's a very big, big achievement and I thank the Army leadership for giving me the opportunity to do this course. My name is Mijan Kata from Kenya Defense Forces. I'm the, specifically from Kenya Navy. It has been an hectic journey all the way for the last 47 weeks. I have really gained a lot from uh, Uganda as a, coming from Kenya uh, because most of the packages, especially on land operations, were packed well heavy for us. The seven East African countries were uh, well represented in this course and we are able to learn from each other. Personally, I have done a master's in defense and security studies from McLaren University, which I feel privileged because it has uh, gained me knowledge, especially on international and regional affairs matters. We are able to know as a region of East Africa where we are and where we aspire to be. Rotarians have also been asked to be crusaders of public health in society with social and individual responsibility to take care of themselves through avoiding excessive smoking and alcohol, plus doing more exercises. Now, while officiating at the installation of a new president of the Rotary Club of Kampala, the World Health Organization's representative in Uganda, Dr. Jonas Tigan, while Moraine say that Rotarians should advocate for vaccination against COVID-19 and polio. World Health Organization says they rely on membership and work of Rotary Movement to effectively do their work and are now close to eradicating polio. The organization has a target of ensuring that every citizen is responsible for their life by emphasizing preventive health, universal health coverage and addressing health emergencies and responses. During installation of a new president for Rotary Club of Kampala, the WHO representative in Uganda, Dr. Jonas Tegeng, Walder Mariam said, emphasis has been put on curative and non-preventive care. You have a social responsibility, an individual responsibility. First of all, take care of yourselves and your families. Smoking, excess alcohol, the need for exercise, to do your medical checkup regularly. You may think that is only to you, but by doing that, you protect your society. While taking oath of office, the president of Rotary Club of Kampala, Dr. Francis Omaswa, said the COVID-19 pandemic affected activities of the club and he is now going to ensure that members are healthy, coupled with revitalizing the program of ensuring that children with heart disease get treatment. I present to you the gong and you could try it out. <laughs> Fellow Rotarians, that signals that we have a president in the house. Heart diseases being flown to centers which are better in America, in Europe for surgery. Uh, so we started this in this Rotary Club in Kampala. Do you smoke cigarettes into your lungs? The lungs were not made for cigarettes. And then you get cancer of the lungs. Why do you take so much alcohol you can't even stand? You are abusing yourself. And so on and so on until 
you end up with illnesses which cause your life to become shorter, which cause you to need medical attention sooner. And now there are interventions which are there, immunization, for example. The installation was done by the district governor-elect, Michael Sebalu, who emphasized that they are to focus on service in line with basic education and literacy, with emphasis put on reading, writing and comprehending this year. Where there are libraries, but the books are in shortage, so some will increase the shortage. But we also want to deal with infrastructure. They may have no library building, and a, a club may choose to construct a building. There are also primary schools and early childhood schools where the teachers are not trained. The club is to ensure effective operationalization of Mokono Hospital, which they constructed to serve more members of the community. I'm Navka Farida and Daniel Lugemwa in Kampala. In other news, Karimo Jong have been advised to embrace economic activities like tourism so as to boost their livelihoods. And this call was made by Habat Biaruhanga, the president of the Uganda Tourism Association, while officiating at passing out Karimo Jong, who were trained in hospitality by Karutunga Tours and Travel in the Park District. Yes. Karamoja subregion is well known for having a range of tourist attractions. It's from this backdrop that Karatunga Tours and Travel has trained over 30 Karimajongs locals in hospitality and tourism management. Yeah, we now are developing a sector we can sustain ourselves and develop ourselves. Yeah, and then we get experts here to panel with us. That's the important. So thank Some of the trained Karimajongs narrate how they have benefited from these freshly acquired skills enhancement exercise. Additional dances when the tourists are around and would they have made us save. They have gave us they started giving us the savings and we are now saving seriously. We are making our bits in order to sell out and I really, really thank Karatunga for supporting us. I used to be with, they see me as they say, maybe, I don't know, but I managed to work with the visitors when the security is even, because I know the time whereby they will go at this time, they will move at this time. When the tourists maybe comes at the, maybe a wrong hour, I will tell them, no, maybe we work at this time before also when they are very far away from the village. Napak District Education Officer Joyce Nakoya advised the community to be creative and expand the tourism industry. Employment is here in tourism. Let's not sit and fold our hands. Let's come up with initiatives, ideas that can help tourism expand and go beyond the president of Uganda Tourism Association, Herbert Biaruhanga, urged the Karimajongs to engage more in economic activities to boost their livelihood. I've been actually talking to some of them, the young people, please make sure that you get skills from tourism, drop these traditional methods of, of surviving and make sure you at least offer services to tourists and make money. I think that's the only message you can give them, those who can afford the trained personnel are employed in the hospitality sector across the nine districts of Karamoja. Habitat for Humanity, Buganda Kingdom, together with Housing Finance Bank, handed over two housing units constructed under the decent living campaign to less privileged in Chabakade, Champisi, sub county in Mokono district. The decent living campaign caters for vulnerable families that include widows, elderly people, child-headed homes, and disaster-affected persons across the country. Uh, at habitant level, we have to date uh, improved over 40,000 homes. That's about 240 individuals to date. That's from 1982 to date. And uh, under the Decent Living Home, uh, I mean the Decent Living Campaign, we have so far improved about 15 homes, about 15 homes using the support of Ugandans. 
Yeah, and we still call upon the Ugandans today that the demand is still there. The housing deficit is at almost 2.4 million housing units and about 12, Ugandans, 12 million Ugandans don't have a decent place to call home. So we can still help ourselves. With the campaign we're using with the Kingdom of Uganda, we're calling it Akala Kalunji Amakama Tendo. So since 2018 we've been building houses. This year, uh, through the collaboration and partnership, we purpose to have as many as 20 units. Uh, and uh, this is our 16th. We have one here in Kasala. There's another in Wike. Uh, Wike, which we've also completed and shall be handing out, handing over very soon. Um, so we'll continue to see uh, beyond just um, our whole distance and distance, can we continue to touch and impact the vulnerable members of our community? So it's something we intend to continue doing over and over again over the, through the next years. We do this program with our partners, Habitat for Humanity Uganda, and this time we sourced another partner, fi uh, Housing Finance. And Housing Finance, this is their second house. One was built in Buyukwe, and in, they have promised to carry on with the partnership because they see the cause, uh, it adds a lot to the community. And they normally want the community to feel their existence, to feel their, their impact. <laughs> We'll now take a short commercial break and be back with more lunchtime news, so please do stay tuned. Sanyu senyo ne sanyu, e sanyu liji wako unzita. E mcheni momo teri imba, na lindi waka, niendo kuli ili simweze, nenga nera vime bebi avuli jevi ya chifere. Kupanga, mbeda awo mtu nofne simu, Nogeno kuri lori ata ndi se mpa ye mitwala ata no kakati kino emu cheni we yang kubide bote basa be kuseto weda baka bazika kanya na buka kanya zenga nta buse ngamba muhuri bafiri nandi wano pressa zagara kunku bafuku sine baka kuturu ateke mu mpa demo doka mu biwono nyi kati ata wiki ndala emu cheni yebale nyo okutufako fenga be bule meziru wero baba lina waka emu cheni Mchen momo nyabo. Teka kumutese mituwale evili. Mwa kusinga uo. Mchen momo bae maneyo. Oizo kumana mukisa. Ane wangu lina muku Toyota Succeed Sato. Mwa mkuma wangu sen kumepili. Mwale weki. Tuka inda kukabe moto kabili munya. Ne momo bae mane. Aso vangu mwombi mwombili. Leaders who care create a good learning environment because a good school equals a better life. Raising voices. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart phone network. Are you a player in the tourism sector with a struggling business following the COVID pandemic? UDB, in partnership with European Union, is providing financial assistance to businesses operating in the tourism sector. You can access subsidized loan with grants, loan with a turnover of up to five years, free business advisory services, and free environmental impact assessment. Visit www.udbl.co.ug slash call for applications to apply. Deadline for submission is 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 0414-355-509. Getting a birth certificate is as easy as 1, 2, 3. 1. Get a birth notification record stamped by a medical officer from a medical facility where the baby was born. O from a sub-county chief if the birth occurred in the community. 
Two, go to the NERA offices in your area and present the notification record, a copy of the Parents or Guardians National ID, and a bank payment slip of 5,000 shillings for citizens and $40 for non-citizens. Three, apply by filing NERA Form 3 from NERA offices or download it from the NERA website www.nira.go.ug A birth certificate will then be issued to you. Birth certificates to refugees born in Uganda are free of charge. This message is brought to you by Nira. The best entertainment for any budget. With Go TV, you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 Uganda shillings per month. Go TV, great stories. Zidiwano, Go TV Uganda. Love it. Welcome back from that short break. You're still watching the lunchtime news here on UBC TV. We take you into more news. Now, the former leader of opposition, Betty Awolo Chan, has warned people in Acholi region against misusing the parish development model funds. Ochan was addressing farmers in Gulu district under their cooperatives during a greenfield tour organized by Sasakawa Africa Organization to train them about new technology in farming. <laughs> The Sasakawa Africa Association has conducted a greenfield exercise where they are interacting with farmers in different cooperatives in northern region on technology farming. Farmers visited various demonstration gardens with fertilizers and others without to identify the difference. Tony Opio from the National Research Organization, NARO, advises farmers to first identify the fertility of the soil before applying fertilizers. When you're using fertilizer, a fertilizer you don't use where there is a fertility of the land. You don't use it in a holy. You first of all you see if the fertile, if the land is fertile, you don't apply. But if the land is infertile, you apply the what the fertilizer. The woman member of parliament, Gulu district, Betty Aol Ochan, advises farmers to utilize PDM money cautiously. It is to transform you. You are a man, you know money can be yours for eating, but this is to make you strong in self-reliance, to make you be able to stand strong and support and also build up your family. The agriculture technician from Sasakawa says from this field they have realized that farmers need more training. The district agriculture officer advises farmers to use the little capital gathered than borrowing loans that they cannot afford to pay back. If they can use their, their, their human power to cultivate land so that they, this land can now earn them some cash, they will have getting the physical uh, uh, capital to an economic capital. The district commercial officer Ham Emukule appealed to cooperative members to do away with misunderstandings and work around to get more opportunities and benefits. Within the cooperative, the cooperative can afford a machine of 1.5 million, a machine of 3 million. With the knowledge that they have come, then they are able to increase and start simple, such that if you get an opportunity to get a tractor, then you will have learned how to run these simple machines. Jonathan from Sasakawa says farmers have welcomed the greenfield exercise and promised to change on the farming methods. Farmers, to take the knowledge which they acquire, from the field day, from the experience hearing, and put it into practice. For example, how to control the pests and diseases, how to, to, to conserve the soil. Farmers appreciated the training and promised to go back and put what they have learned into practice. Training on fertilizer use, which I think they really need more training on this. How we can simplify work using new technology. This program is funded by the government of Uganda, European Union and other partners. Sebira Andrew compiled this report. 
The Chinese President Xi Jinping called for the building of high-quality partnerships as he hosted the BRICS summit in Beijing. The virtual event brought together the leaders of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. ...of cooperation and building more consensus. This is what China is ready to work on with its BRICS partners as this year's rotating presidency. At the 14th BRICS summit, President Xi Jinping stressed that the meeting is at a critical juncture and positive, stable and constructive forces are needed for the world. Sometimes smooth, sometimes rough, but always moving forward. Although the international situation is constantly changing, the trend of open development will not. The desire to work together to face challenges will not change. The theme of the summit focuses on fostering high-quality partnerships and ushering in a new era for global development. That was echoed by participating leaders of Brazil, Russia, India and South Africa, who have long agreed on expanding the mechanism wider and deeper. The meeting adopted and issued the 14th BRICS Summit Beijing Declaration, in which the five countries look forward to injecting new impetus to international cooperation. The BRICS cooperation mechanism was established in 2006. Over the past 16 years, a multi-level cooperation structure has been gradually formed and has been particularly fruitful this year. For example, cooperation agreements have been signed between May and June in several key areas, including vaccines, food security, trade, digital economy and aerospace. More meetings under the BRICS partnership will be held in the second half of the year in China. The results of BRICS cooperation are important for the group itself, as well as emerging markets and developing countries, as they call for better global development. As this year's BRICS chair, China is expected to foster a broader partnership and promote prosperity on a greater scale. The Tales of Kasozi, brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission. Hello, this is Kasozi. How can I help you? Congratulations, congratulations. Oh, one good day. One good day? But I haven't entered any competition. Oh, what day, Chi? Since you use your phone every day, we have randomly selected you as one of our loyal customers, and you have won a brand new pickup. Hey, so how do I get this pickup? The pickup is in Nama Ave. All we have to do is quickly bring it to you. You know, we are delivering many of them. So, just send us 100k for fuel via mobile money and we'll bring it to you. But Chief, I'm in no hurry to receive it. Namambe is just here. Keep it at your warehouse, give me directions and I will get time to pick it up. Ah, vow now we. If you don't have money, just say. Tonfera. Never send money to strangers. Winners of competitions are contacted through official channels and are never asked to pay for anything. Stay tuned for what Kasozi does next. Tonfera, refrain from unnecessary engagements with strangers over the phone. This message is powered by UCC, MTN, Airtel, Bank of Uganda and NPSP Association. Welcome back. It's still the Lunchtime News broadcasting live from Nile Avenue. Now, with just a few hours left to kick off uh, the much-awaited African Women Cup of Nations, tournament we bring you some of the past eye-catching highlights from the past five tournaments played from 2010 to 2018 and their winners respectively now in this period defending champions nigeria are the most successful side winning four titles out of the five played four titles won by nigeria came against south africa in 2018 Cameroon in 2016 and 2014, and lastly, the first of the four coming against West African side Equatorial Guinea in 2010. In 2012, West Africa side Equatorial Guinea bounced back from their loss against Nigeria to beat South Africa 2-1 in the final. This year's tournament sees the tournament holders eye a record-extending win and seal a historic La Decima. Motlalo! South Africa certainly have failed and Nigeria are the ninth champions in this competition. Spectacular. 
In other news, the national basketball team, the Silverbacks, are in Chigali, Rwanda, for the second round of the 2023 FIBA World Cup qualifiers after concluding a two-week camp in Alexandria, Egypt. The team, however, lost all their three friendlies in Cairo against Rwanda, scoring 45 to, 40, to 84. Egypt beat them 58 to 89 and Jordan beat them 66 to 78. Uganda will face Mali this evening at 4 p.m. then Cape Verde on Saturday and Nigeria on Sunday. The Silverbacks will need to maintain their top three spot in Group A to qualify for the final 12-team qualification round from where the top five will qualify for the 2023 FIBA World Cup. Give this man some credit. I mean, look at this. This is Brandon Davis Airlines. Throw it down, Brandon. Throw it down. And you can see Uganda trying to pull a half-court track, but Diagu now, he'll pull it for a three-point. Oh, baby! Diagu nails it. Nigerian transition finds Omoera. Good ball movement. Another three-pointer. Off the backboard. Well, did he call bank? I don't think he cares. Already 32 minutes past the hour of 1 o'clock, we're far past our time, but thank you for being a lovely audience. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold, and do stay tuned for more news in our subsequent bulletin. Up next is the score with the sports desk. Enjoy yourselves. The Tales of Kasozi.